Today I am making a quilt using only ugly fabric. This is by far the hardest video I have ever done and I only have myself to blame because I was the one who walked into that store and said So yeah, I bought the ugliest fabric I could find and now I have to do something absolutely beautiful with it. I keep saying that sewing and quilting are magical so here's my chance to prove it. Or maybe I need a miracle. Is this even possible? Let's find out. I don't even know why I went to the store. I have a bunch of ugly fabrics right here. Mike's least favorite fabric of all. If you don't know what to do with ugly fabric either, this is the video for you. Today I'm going to show you seven ways you can use that ugly fabric and actually be happy with the results. Now let's see what I've got here. A quick disclaimer here guys, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So if you happen to see ugly fabrics I've chosen and find them beautiful, that's awesome. <laughs> And our first lesson, I guess, which is every fabric can be loved by the right person. But for these, that person clearly isn't me. Do I get to throw one of these away? You know, just one? Oh. The first thing to do with ugly fabric is to cut it. I heard very early on in my quilting journey that if a fabric is ugly, you just haven't cut it small enough. And that is the most brilliant piece of advice as far as ugly fabric goes that I've ever heard. Let's go ahead and cut some 2.5 inch strips out of these fabric. It kind of remind me of those yellow beans, you know, from that movie. What was it called? The funny ones. <laughs> And if that doesn't work, we can just cut them even smaller. I mean, look at these. These don't look as bad, do they? All you need to do now is mix them up with other fabrics and you get a cute pattern, actually. Look at that. For me personally, I have a much harder time dealing with ugly colors than ugly patterns. For one thing, you know, like I've just shown you, the patterns can get deconstructed, but the colors will always remain ugly. <laughs> I've told you before, I have a thing with brown and yellow ochre too. I just don't know how to use them in quilting. They never look good to me. So for the fabric I have in those colors, I usually end up using them for practice. You know, a difficult pattern, a new technique, you know, free motion quilting patterns I want to test out. It's actually the perfect fabric to use and it is a really big help. And you can also hide the fabric. It can be in lining, backing, you know, some thin, thin binding or to make hanging sleeves. And if you don't know what that is, it is a strip of fabric you add to a quilt you want to hang on the wall to make sure that quilt looks perfect once you hang it. Time to cut these strips into quilt blocks and they are 4.5 inches tall so that is exactly how we're going to cut them into squares. We need 12 of them. There's plenty of other ways to hide ugly fabric. You can use it as foundation for any stitch and flip projects or for making scrappy fabric like we've done a couple of times. We use it as foundation fabric and then just add a top layer of scraps to hide it. Perfect. Also, sometimes the back of the fabric looks better than the front. Let's see with these. This is actually, yeah, they're onto something. Look at that. This is really cute. It's not so aggressive. Look at that. I would much rather use this than this one. Yeah, this is way too light, so let's stick with the giraffes. Now, another very clever way to make ugly fabric look good is to add stuff to it. <laughs> you can applique something, you can quilt it with a beautiful pattern, or you can do something I have learned very recently and that I am currently obsessed with. It's a nifty little skill I have picked up on a Skillshare class and Skillshare is the sponsor for this video. I have been taking so many of the classes lately, I don't quite know what to do with myself here guys. <laughs> Skillshare is the largest online learning community out there. They offer thousands of classes in all sorts of categories like painting, drawing or sewing. It's not just hobbies either, you know, you can take classes on leadership, marketing, journaling, even video editing. There's a whole world of possibilities to explore. You just pick the class you want and you just take each lesson at your own pace. You can go back and forth, you can share your progress with other people who are doing the same class. It's all very easy, very interactive. I love it. This works perfectly for me. It really feels like you're part of a community. But back to my hobby. Guys, have you ever tried machine drawing? As in drawing using your sewing machine? It's absolutely wonderful and kind of magical. <laughs> I mean, I cannot draw with a pencil, but with my sewing machine, the way they explain it in the lessons, easy peasy. Look at this, I did this, and I learned all of it on Skillshare. Still early days though. <laughs> 
And if you've been meaning to try it, but don't think you have the time, here's the thing. Summer is here, right around the corner. And the good news is you can take a Skillshare class anywhere at any time. Think about that skill you've been meaning to learn for a while or that class you need to take to improve your life like organizing or time management or maybe you know to start your own business like you've been dreaming for a while. Skillshare is the place to learn it and the time to start is right now. And for the first 500 people that use the link I am leaving in the description you get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can get started today have all of these lined up and I'm going to try and chop them all at once because I want to be able to mix them up and the only way to make sure they fit, you know, they match is if I chop them all in one time. But uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, uh, just, you know, chop a few at a time and it will be fine. <laughs> this is what we have. Mike's shedding a tear, but it's all fine. I keep saying I'm the wonky quilter. This is as wonky as it gets, isn't it? <laughs> And now we get to mix these up. So how exactly does one end up with ugly fabric? It's usually a gift or part of a bundle. Maybe you bought it for a specific project and don't know what to do with what's left of it. You know, sometimes you just outgrow the fabric you used to love. And let's not forget about all those impulse fabric buys we always end up regretting. Now, let's say none of these options work for you. The fabric is ugly, you can't stand it no matter what you do to it. Well, there's still plenty of room in our lives for ugly quilts. Quilts are useful and warm and cozy no matter what they look like. So maybe an ugly quilt isn't something you want decorating your home or being seen by others, but you can always use it on a cold night and I guarantee your pets will love it no matter what it looks like. Or maybe just donate it, you know, for homeless people or whomever needs it. It's ugly to you, but someone else may see it and love it and will be you know, of so much use either way. You know, I've been sitting here doing this with you guys and thinking what is actually the ugliest fabric I've ever owned and I can think of a couple. When I started to sew and had my uh, shop on Etsy, I usually presented a mosaic of fabric so people would choose from and they always picked the ugliest one. So yeah, I ended up with lots of those. But the ugliest one that I actually thought I had run out is definitely this one. A nativity scene. Yeah, I used this for Vlogmas 2022. I thought I had run out of it by then, but it's not. It's still here and it is extremely ugly. Look at this. Ah, oh, how cute is this? With the giraffes and the googly eyes and the weird sick hearts. I love it. I have to say, I've even surprised myself here, guys. Mike isn't convinced. He clearly does not agree with me. How about you? What do you think? 